up. So I'm on my way to the uh, nature area here in the community. It's uh, it's too darn cold to ride the motorcycle. <laughs> Not as cold as they were in Texas by any means. So I, man, I tell you, that's a whole situation that we're going to have to talk about when I get there. I thought I'd just kind of ride along in the cart here and. Uh, well, I wanted to show you my cart. You know, it's nice to uh, to have a cart. Um, we picked it up dirt cheap, and uh, the motor was busted in this thing. And uh, they hired a guy, and uh, he, oh yeah, I, I can rebuild that motor. Only cost you 600 bucks. And, okay, and then it needed new batteries, and that was like a thousand, thousand five hundred. So, literally for two thousand dollars, we got a. Well, it's, it's an old cart. It's from t the year 2000, but, you know, the guy that worked on it, he said, well, this is even better than the newer ones because it doesn't have all them newfangled electronics on them. So I said, okay, that's cool. Now, it does need new tires, so eventually i got to get that, but they're, they're pretty cheap right now at Amazon, and I don't know with inflation what that's going to happen, but we've got a lot of things to talk about, and uh, when we get to the place, I'll tell you what, I'll let you see a little bit of what the community looks like. We're getting ready to to go by the golf course up here and I'll, I'll swing it around and uh, give you a view of uh, the rough life. <laughs> no, I, I'm just kidding. I mean, yeah, everybody's had it rough with the stupid uh, CCP virus. And, uh, um, so here we go. Let's, uh, let's just let you get, get a look at the community. This is Champions and Heritage. Uh, we have 36 holes here in Del Webb, which is pretty nice. Uh, there's the pond over there. No cars are coming. So that's, uh, this is Florida. So let's swing around and, uh, well, we'll get a little more. This is the uh, sixth green, six hole green here. All right, see, everybody's out playing. The cold ain't stopping. Nothing stops for golf here in Florida, I can tell you that. People love to golf. And uh, yeah, our little nature garden here, so they keep up the community really, really nice, but they keep raising our dues. And we'll talk about that HOA here in a minute, but let's swing around and let you see what's on the other side of the road. So we're coming up on the, uh, the workout facility. Uh, there's no cars behind me, so I can get over in the raid here. And there's the softball field, and you see people out there uh, playing softball, enjoying themselves. And here's a couple of people walking their dog. I'll come in on the other side because I don't want to freak them out. But this is uh, this is something that I've really missed. Uh, coming up right here, this is the workout facility. And I mean, we've got the equipment in there. I mean, it's, it's, it's a real, real nice gym. It's included with the HOA fee. So, you know, hell, I'm up in Flo I'm Washington, D.C. I was paying almost $120 years ago just to be a member at a facility. But I haven't been able to use it. Uh, I went in, there's a there's an Olympic-sized swimming pool in there. And uh, I went in, and uh, they were letting too many people. This was back, you know, before we knew that the virus wasn't quite so so bad, you know. Uh, let me get the key out. And uh, this is the this is where we're gonna hike, and I'm gonna make a, a that cybersecurity guy talking video. We're just gonna talk about things in general, but uh, I did want you to see some of the facilities here, softball field over here. So let's let's get started. I gotta get get everything out of the cart and get ready to go. So I wanted to wait till we got a little ways back in here. It's just a little half mile nature trail that uh, we have in the middle of the community. And, uh, you yeah, know, you can see it backs up to some of the houses here, but uh, at least they kept this area preserved. It's got kind of a nice touch. Uh, let me whip around. We'll head on in here and just pass a couple of people, so hopefully uh, we'll get some time to, to make this video. You know, there's so many things to talk about. It's like, where to begin? I guess I'll start with my favorite topic, and that's the, uh, the silver squeeze. The great silver squeeze is what I like to call it came real close to uh, to breaking the market there. I threw in my uh, my $2,000 worth to buy some more physical silver. Um, but, uh, and it's getting rare. I mean, if you go up on uh, eBay, that's, 
the coins are selling at a premium. I mean, usually, I don't think you can get anything one ounce silver under forty dollars right now. You know, now the spot price on it's about twenty-seven or well, twenty-seven fifty somewhere around there, fluctuating. Um, we'll have to see what happens. Got somebody coming here. Hold on one second. Howdy. So, uh, so it's looking looking good. I think that. Uh, as long as people keep buying. Now, I did hear that Rick Sprott threw in a couple million dollars into the fray. Uh, he bought up the PSLV, the ETF. Don't uh, don't buy the SIVR. That's uh, that's JP Morgan is the, the people that are housing that. And certainly don't buy SLV because that's just a derivative contract. Um, there's you know there's a lot of speculation on that. There hasn't been an audit done on it since last March. And uh, people are clamoring to, to see if they actually have the silver to cover that ETF. Too, well, let's get my stupid mug out of the picture and just let you enjoy the trail. Hold on. So that's that's kind of it on the on the silver squeeze. I think it's just a matter of time until we see the precious metals really take off. If you've been watching platinum, it's doing real well. It's uh, it's almost thirteen hundred dollars now, and uh, like I said, it's too expensive for me. And that's per ounce, by the way. And uh, I used to buy it at $400 an ounce, uh, I remember back in the day, because it's 100 times more rare than gold. So I always felt that platinum was a better investment than gold. You know, now gold's up at, what, 1800 So that's it on the, on the silver squeeze. I wanted to give a shout out to the, uh, the people in Texas. Uh, man, I tell you what you guys went through. Uh, that just shows you how weak the power grid is. You know, we've... We've been knowing that for quite some time, you know. Uh, I think there was some impetus in the Trump administration to work on the power grid, but uh, I don't recall, you know, that being a big, big issue. You, you know, you'd think that Congress, instead of uh, impeaching, worrying about impeaching Trump after he's left office in an unconstitutional ceremony that was a fiasco, uh, they would concentrate on more important things, you know. And hell, it took Biden a week to even engage FEMA. And from what I understand, I don't know if there's been any help for the people of Texas. Of course, that is a Republican state, and Biden's a Democrat. <laughs> he probably didn't want to help him out. Uh, but anyway, of course, we, but I, I do, um, I just, you know, want to throw that out. I mean, because, you know, we really, really got to upgrade our power grid. I don't, you know, if we get an EMP pulse, I think it would throw the United States back to the dark ages, you know. And all, all you need is just to blow up a nuclear bomb up in the atmosphere and you know, the whole United States will be crushed. So that's it. Uh, that's it on that. Uh, give a shout out to uh, to Rush Limbaugh. He kept me company many on many hikes. I would list, listen to him, and especially during the election. That was a radio icon that I'm sorry he's gone. Uh, whether you liked him or not, you know, he was an amazing, amazing force to be reckoned with. Uh, really, really funny. I enjoyed it. He made me laugh. A lot of people don't understand. He had a real good sense of humor, you know. And uh, and, and you know, the, it was amazing how he could just talk for three hours and uh, and do a radio broadcast, which I you know was amazing. And and keep it engaging. You know, usually it was about topics that you you're like, wow, I didn't know that was going on, or hmm, that's interesting, you know. So it was. Uh, he'll be sorely missed. Um, I'm going to be interested to see you know who they. They, you know, maybe Todd Herman or, you know, a couple of them guys, but I don't think anybody's going to be able to take over for Rush. So that's what a loss. So I did want to talk about that the power grid, the silver squeeze. Uh, the other thing is uh, resilience. Um, you know, you saw how those people in Texas uh, just, it, it, you know, they were just devastated. And, uh, you know, I understand you can't plan for everything, you know, and, and I thought about that, you know, suppose that it had been Florida that had that deep freeze and uh you know what would, would i have been prepared or would my house have been prepared and, and you know come to think of it well i do have you know i have propane see here's a, here's something that you can do to get more resilient so what i'm going to turn around here we're getting up to the pond i see a lot of people these people are out enjoying the trail and that's good but uh so <clears throat> anyway you know one thing you can do to become more resilient is is go camping you know, when you're camping, most of the time you're going to face the elements in ways that you 
could never imagine now people say oh god i hate camping i don't want to ever do that well you know guess what i mean i've been in tents where it got really cold at night so what did i do i bought one of those tent propane heaters you know you just put it on the floor and it'll heat up the tent so if i was in that situation where the heat was off you know i could always run those propane heaters in my house you know they're not gonna they're not gonna warm the house up to you know 100 degrees or anything but they will keep the chill off so that's you know that's something uh you know another guy pointed out uh and you know this i don't understand and i've talked about this in other videos is a water filter okay and i'm not talking about the brittle water filter or the pure later that you know you just run tap water through i'm talking about get you a doggone good water filtration system where you can dump a mud puddle in there and it'll filter the water and you can buy a kite kite uh you know any of those camping filters you know the thing i like about those is they're portable and uh so that you know if you do have to walk down to the nearest pond you can just pump the water right out of that pond now in texas you know <laughs> something else you know i never really thought of was the water froze on them so you can't pump frozen water so i can understand that they're there a water filter may not have helped so like i said you can't it's hard to prepare for every eventuality but you know you can look at that situation and say what would it be like for me you know and here's another thing i have a solar generator okay which is pr pr pretty good for florida but guess what it was cloudy so all of those solar panels weren't generating any electricity and if you had a solar generator like i do <laughs> you can't you can't charge it back up because there's no dog on sunlight now mine are 100 watt panels and supposedly even if it's cloudy you're all going to get some charge on the battery but you know the main interest that i have with my solar generator is that it, it, it can run the refrigerator now here's a here's a consideration for you okay you know and i've had power outages since i bought that solar generator was uh you know it's not good enough just to run the refrigerator for you know what a, a day okay and that's about all those batteries will hold we'll just make this turn here is they only hold about a day of charge um so what did i do i bought another battery to get some people coming we'll cut off right there and i'll get get some more in just a minute all right so getting back to it uh with talking about the solar generator so what did i do i bought a um i bought a second battery for it and so and it, it turns out it had a uh, um in the back of it is one of those gold zeros uh it had a plug-in so that you could hook the second battery chain it to the first one and uh and keep them both charged because that's some real important with those, those batteries you got to keep a 100 percent charge on them uh you know until you got to use them that is so that gave me twice as much time but you know i guarantee you within 24 hours both those batteries would just be dead and uh so because that refrigerators use a lot of electricity i, I did not know that uh, when they're running now if you if you get the temperature in the fridge as long as you if you're in a power outage you know try not to open the fridge but you know that's where your food is <laughs> so you might have to open it at some point but uh, luckily it was cold so that probably helped the people of texas keep the food cold so i guess that might have been a good thing i'm sure they didn't look at it that way uh so you know and, and here i am i'm working on uh, uh trying to put a garden in the back of the house i'm still digging up the rocket you know unfortunately it's, we've been getting a lot of rain i mean this is you know if you don't believe in climate change we are getting some weird weather man that you know cold vortex on texas uh you know this is not the rainy season here in florida and uh here's, a, here's another golf hole for you so it's uh it's nice nice being here and uh <clears throat> where was i i was talking about the uh the resilience so growing your own food so i am eventually going to have a garden but i got to wait till the uh the soil you know it has to dry out enough so that i can I dig it up and filter all that rock out before i can put the black dirt in there so you know it's a work in progress i've been at it for a couple months and i'm surprised the neighbors haven't complained because those sawhorses have been <laughs> sitting in my backyard you know i get out there and unfortunately it's, it's back breaking work and you know you say kirk but you're still kind of young not really man I, but you give me about two or three hours of shoveling rock that's about all i can do and then i just kind of go back in the house and watch tv so now as far as hiking you know i can hike miles and miles because i do it all the time it's my favorite thing in the world isn't this beautiful I do like it maybe we'll get some birds along here it uh, you can see it's a real real short hike uh, 
Yeah, I wish they had preserved more of the uh, community for this uh, this uh, nature area, but uh, that's the, that's just the, the nature of the beast, I guess. So uh, you know, one guy's he's uh, he was talking about raising rabbits. You know, that would be a good meat source. Uh, they don't require a lot of space, and uh, you know, if you if you gotta skin them and cook them, you know, that'd be a good way to get some meat. Uh, and of course, you know. A lot of people around here have chickens. Of course, I can't do it here in the community. Nobody in this community wants you to grow your own food. God knows, no. We don't want people to be able to grow their own food. That would be horrible, you know. So that's one of the problems with being in a, a planned community like this. But, you know, when we moved here three years ago, I did not even think about the fact, oh, this is another thing I wanted to talk about. Oh, goodness gracious. The coming financial crisis. People, I hope you're prepared. You know, I think the people that are going to get hurt the worst are the ones with pensions. And there's a lot of people here in Central Florida who survive off of those pensions. And uh, if those pension funds get raided, which I'm pretty sure they are, I'll check the bird out. Uh, they're, they're going to, there's going to be a lot of property for sale here in Florida, I can tell you that. Because they're not going to be able to afford anything. There he goes. I scared him off. But uh, isn't that beautiful? Look at him flying across. Oh, yeah. But, uh... So, you know, where to go and what to do. Um, I actually am going to be consulting a financial planner. They, they were talking about how they're invested mainly in, in gold and, uh, you know, uh, gold miners, silver miners. And that's where most of all of my money is right now. I'm in the, I'm in the Sprott ETFs uh, quite a bit. Uh, just got my fingers crossed that they have what they say. But see, I'm, all my money's in IRAs and, uh, and um, also Roth IRAs. So... I can't really buy physical with that unless I put it in one of those IRAs. Uh, you got a gold silver IRAs, but you know, pretty much missed that boat. And uh, at the time, you know, I wanted to, the ability not just to, to buy a gold silver IRA. I always wanted the flexibility to buy uh, stocks or bonds. You know, of course, stocks and bonds. I'm I'm completely out. I'm just going to tell you that right now. You know, it's not financial advice, but. I'm just telling you what I'm doing, and uh, I got, you know, I, I've liquidated everything. Now, did I miss out on a, the melt-up in the stock market? Yes, I did. Missed out on a lot of money there. Uh, but when it crashes, 50%. Some people are saying 80%. Some are saying 20 You know, who knows, but it's coming down, and uh, it's going to come down hard. And uh, so I hope you're preparing for that. Uh, you know, what I want to do, I've been, been opening up. Now, get this. They, they made me ask at Fidelity for permission to do options. Now, why are you got to ask for permission to do options? That's the stupidest thing I ever heard of. You know, if you want to buy options, you should be able to buy options. So, you know, but it puts a delay on everything. So, But I am going to buy some puts on the S&P in anticipation of a drop. Now, those are going to be long-term puts, but uh, that should cover me in the event that the, the stock market crashes. But, uh, and yeah, yeah, you can lose, I mean, puts are risky. You might lose all that money, but I'm not going to put a whole lot of money into it. But, I, you know, I'm still waiting on Fidelity to say, okay, Kirk, you can do it now, you know. It's like stupid. And that's, that's the way they play the game. You know, the game's so rigged for the wealthy people and the, and the government that, uh, you know, us, us little fish out here, just trying to survive uh, they make it uh, really hard and things are going to get a lot worse so i guess that's about it for today uh you know there's a lot of videos up on youtube um, uh, i love arcadia economics he's pretty good i was trying to think of what the the recent interview oh peak prosperity those guys got a lot of good videos they just did one here recently with a woman and uh, she was talking about the valuations and and how skewed you know compared to the gdp uh, the value of the stock market it's, uh, it's, it, it, it's never been so disparate ever and uh, she explains it a lot better than I could so I encourage you to, to watch that video if you have access to YouTube well obviously if you're watching this video you, you're on YouTube so check, check, those, check those videos out the latest one I think was the best one I've seen in a long time and uh, anyway I guess more power to you just kind of wanted to talk about things because they were running around in my head last night and I was just like man I you know the six people that watch these videos <laughs> they might be interested in just a little bit of this plus I wanted to show you a little bit of my community you know this is this is nice it's just this I wish this hike was longer and uh, I could go 
to a park, but uh, you know, it's, we've had so much rain, there's not a lot of places you can hike. And you know, another thing that about my community, and, and it's typical because people don't think of other people. It's so ridiculous, but you can't bring dogs on this trail in my community because I guess for before we got here, people were letting their pets poop out here and and not picking it up, and so they ruined it for everybody else in the community. So they just made a made a, uh, a policy that you can't bring dogs here. Now, wouldn't it be great if I could bring my dog here on the cart and just walk him around this a few times? You know, I, I would really enjoy that. I I hate walking. You know, a lot of people just walk through the neighborhoods, you know, on the streets, uh, and, and that's fine. I just, you know, I'd much rather be out on a trail uh, in the forest somewhere than, than walking through a neighborhood to get my exercise. Now, sometimes I do in the evenings go up onto the golf course and I'll walk uh, around on the golf course uh, if I'm you know, just out to get some exercise. You know, of course, they got a policy. You're not supposed to do that. And who's going who's gonna to stop me? And I only do it in the evenings when nobody's out there, of course. I don't walk... <laughs> I don't walk around people when they're playing golf, you know, that would be ridiculous. So, I guess that's it for today. Um, you know, be safe, uh, get your money safe. You know, the, the only place I know to go, if you got an IRA like I do, is the Sprite ETFs. And, you know, you have to cross your fingers and hope they actually have the gold, the silver, and the platinum, and the palladium in the, in the, to back it up. They say they do. Um, you know, like I said, get out of SIVR, get out of SLV, you know, JP Morgan has its hands all over those, and, uh, those are derivatives, um, SLV especially, I wouldn't, wouldn't touch that with a 10-foot pole, and, uh, you know, get your money, uh, and GLD, of course, you know, don't forget that one, I, I forgot about GLD, you know, definitely GLD and SLV, get the hell out. All right, you guys, peace out, hope you enjoyed the hike today, I uh, don't want the video to get too long, and, uh, it's, a uh, it, it's cold. It's too cold to go anywhere. It's too wet to go anywhere. But uh, maybe tomorrow we'll get a good hike in. Uh, I, it's going to be cold again tomorrow, so I can't ride the motorcycle. I'm a wimp. I admit it. I'm a super wimp because anything below 70, I, I freeze on the back of that thing when that 55 mile an hour wind hits me. And, uh, it, you know, so I got to get wait till the temperature gets above 70. And there'll be plenty of days when it's that way and we can get out and continue along the Florida Trail. You know, as you saw, we knocked out Silver Springs, so that was good. I, that, that took eight, ten days cutting through, and then finally a trail crew came through and finished it off for me, so that was good. Um, so we finished that section. We'll continue north, uh, north of 314, and uh, I, next time what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plow my way through that. So I'm going to throw on the snake leggings, and I'm going to put on the long pants, and, and the, uh, you know, just have a long sleeve, uh, uh, you know, top on. Hopefully it won't be a too hot a day. And uh, we're just going to hike through that stuff. I can't cut through it. I don't have the equipment. Uh, so we're going to, we're just going to, and supposedly that shouldn't be that big a hike. The only problem is I don't know where to park the doggone motorcycle. You know, I hate leaving it right there on the side of the road. You know, I'm hoping, you know, somebody could, could just throw it in the back of a pickup truck and then I'm screwed, you know. So, all right, we got somebody coming. That's it for today. Have a good one. So just wanted you to see this. This is pretty cool. See how he's got his beak around on top of himself? I never knew, you know, until I came here to Florida that ducks could do that, you know. I don't want to disturb them, but they're resting. And uh, I just want to see how his head was tucked in. I just think that's pretty cool. All right. All right, we got another bird. I'll see if I can get, I've been getting real close to him, but I was talking on the phone. I don't think he's gonna move. He's just been sitting there the whole time. There he is, check him out. Not even looking at me. Let's see how close we can get. Oh, oh, there he goes, I scared him off, darn it. He's pissed off now. <laughs> oh well, sorry about that. I got we have some cool squirrels here too in Florida. Check him out, he's trying not to scare him too bad. Getting up on him. Yeah, they're not too afraid because people here sometimes feed them, which you should never do. And uh, so we'll probably even get a little closer. Look at him. Yeah, he's looking at me. Alrighty, I'll leave him be. So when I first moved here, <laughs> I thought that was a real bird. <laughs> you know, sneaking up on it. You know, I didn't realize that that's just here to 
try to scare the geese away so they don't poop all over the dock here. But we're going to try to sneak up. There is a real bird right out here. And I'm going to try to sneak up on him. Let's see if we can get him. I don't want to scare him. I'm coming up on him. Hold on. Oh, there he goes. There he goes. Uh, I scared him off. You see all the birds over there sunning themselves? There's one right there. Anyway, it was one other topic that I completely forgot about that I wanted to talk about. Now, whether you're a Biden fan or, or not, I think the guy's lost his mind, man. He's talking about legalizing 25 million illegal aliens in the country. Uh, and, and that includes the ones that we've deported. A lot of them guys are criminals. He's, he's inviting them right back and they can get become U.S. citizens. Um, you know, I know. And, and then, of course, in Texas, they got a a whole medical crisis down there on the border because they're coming across and they're not even testing them so they you know they could be sick with the virus and they're going to infect all the border towns uh, i mean what is the guy thinking about you know i i just uh, i don't even understand that i mean i i knew that he was going to stop the uh, the wall you know he didn't want that wall built no no we wouldn't want to control our borders that would be terrible um you know because you know trump uh, he, he Got a lot of that wall built, and uh, it did. A, it's still doing, still doing a lot of good. What he did manage to get built, um, but you know, some of these things that Biden is doing are just crazy. Uh, I'm just keeping on the birds over here. Well, it kind of just swing around, but I just wanted to throw that out there. I mean, are you for? I mean, and you say, well, Kirk, you're heartless. Well, we have what's called a path to citizenship, people. It's called a legal way to become a citizen. And when you when you just say, okay, if you can just make it to the United States, you're going to be a U.S. citizen. You know, what kind of message are you sending to all the people that went through the legal process? You know, that's why we have a legal process. Uh, now, if you want to put those 25 million illegals through the legal process and, and get them a what's called a, a, a the proper path to citizenship, um, you know, that'd be all, all for that. But uh, to just say, okay, you're here, so therefore you're going to be a U.S. citizen. Now, I'm, I know the Democrats are doing that just so they can get those votes. Because they figure if they give them citizenship that they'll vote uh, Democrat. But I'm not so sure about that. You know, there's a lot of uh, Hispanics that live on the border, especially here in Florida. In Orlando, the Puerto Ricans went heavily for Trump. And so did the Cubans, because they know what socialism is. You know, and that's, that's, that's where we're heading. Check out them ducks. Isn't that cool? All right, well, I told you, look at the size of those birds over there. I would try to sneak up on them, but I've been I've scared enough birds today. <laughs> All right, man. Peace out.